in this set of equations, we have f of x equal to absolute value of x plus 5. When you say absolute value, it's the distance of a certain coordinate from 0. So remember, there are no negative distances, which means that the resulting here is always positive. What we're going to focus now is on the value of x. Are you allowed to use any values of x? Can you use positive, negative, or 0? If you can use any of these numbers, then therefore, your domain is element of all, all real. Which means you can use any values of x, and it's still, it will still give you a number. Okay, not imaginary, and not the other restrictions. But how about the range? Now remember the definition of, of absolute value. The range here is affected by the absolute value. When you say absolute value, it will always give you positive. So therefore, you will never have a chance to get a negative for the value for y. So which means that y, and when you say positive, it's greater than 0. Okay? So it's sort of the same as the square root, but in this case, we are not limited to our domain, but rather, uh, we are restricted with our range okay number six in number six is the same as uh, the previous uh, problem number four wherein you have a square root but this time there is a negative outside try to focus on the x first are you allowed to use any values of x here can i use negative or positive here this time you have to be careful because you have a square root and remember in square root you always make sure that the resulting value here should always be positive so we do our trick earlier 2x uh, plus 3 is always greater than or equal to 0 solving for x that will be 2x greater than or equal to negative 3 and x is equal to negative 3 halves so therefore our x should only be greater than or equal to 3 halves and 3 halves is, I think, negative 1.5. Well, your range here will be dependent on the resulting value here. Now, since we already know that the least value that we can get here is 0, you cannot get a negative, but rather 0 or positive. So, the least number that you can get here is 0. So, our y is limited. So, which means that as you increase the value of your, of your domain here, or as you increase the value of the expression here, once you take it out from the square root, it will become more negative. It's constantly decreasing. So your range is less than 0, okay, because of the negative. Now, this one, it's greater than 0 because there's no negative outside, okay? So I hope you see the difference and how the negative sign really changed the behavior of your function. Okay, let's have number 7. In number 7, that's x cubed minus 7. The first question that you're going to ask, am I allowed to use any values of x here? Remember, that's x cubed, okay? And when you have x cubed, if you replace it with negative, the result is negative. If you replace it with positive, the result is positive. Unlike the square here, it's only limited to positive values. So you cannot get a negative value after the square root unless there's negative outside. But in this case, since it's a cube, there's no limitation of the result. Okay, so therefore, we can use any values of x. The range is affected by the exponent here. Observe, this is x cubed. If we use a unique value for x here, it will result a unique value for y. So your range is not limited. So we are allowed to get any values of y. In number 8, observe, even though there's a 2 here, we don't care about that 2 for your domain because our concern is the value of our, or the possible values of our x here. So when it's under the square root, it should be, it should always be greater than or equal to 0. So what are the values that will give you positive or equal to 0? Those numbers are greater than negative 1. Therefore, x such that x is greater than or equal to negative 1. Now, the range is our problem this time because the range is affected by 2 uh, negative outside. So, think first of the minimum value that you can get here. The minimum value is the 0. So, that means the smallest number that we can get here is 0. If the minimum value here is 0, so 2 minus 0 is equal to 2. That's the minimum. That's equal to 2 because we have a value here outside. So, 
even though it's zero you still have two here so that's the minimum or maybe the maximum value since this is a square root so it will only take positive answers and when you take out positive answer with negative waiting outside it will become more negative so therefore as you increase the value of your x here the more negative it becomes so therefore if it's more negative it will be less than or equal to 2. let's have number 9 in number 9 are we allowed to use any values of x here observe the index the index is cube a cube root of 8 will give you uh, 2 a cube root of negative 8 will give you negative 2 so you see there are two different solutions when you're dealing with cube root it allows negative and positive to be taken out or to be extracted from the cube root so which means that we are not limited to our domain so we can use any values of x if this one allows negative and positive and or even zero to be extracted this means that our range now will be unique which means we are not also uh, limited with our range value now let's have number 10 in number 10 we have a fraction okay there are things that you have to consider when you're dealing with a fraction what is not allowed when you're dealing with fraction okay it has something to do with your denominator okay in the denominator you are not allowed to get zero this should not be equal to zero when the denominator becomes zero the solution becomes undefined so what numbers can make this denominator zero so you already have a number sentence here that means x should not be equal to positive 2 because when you replace 2 here 2 minus 2 will give you zero and remember that's our restriction but can you use any other values of x except 2 yes you can use negative you can use positive in here so therefore you can use any number but x should not be equal to 2 that's your domain the easiest way to do this one is to solve for x in terms of y okay so when you say solve for x in terms of y you change this to y because function of x is just the same as y so that will be 1 over x minus 2 then we solve for x in terms of y we isolate x to any variable so we multiply that will be uh, x times y and negative 2y equal to 1 since we're isolating x so therefore xy is equal to 1 plus 2y and then in order to solve for x divide both sides by y so x is equal to 1 uh, 1 plus 2y over y observe your y you have a y in the denominator and since it's in the denominator we and we are not allowed to get zero so therefore you can use any values of y but we cannot use zero because the zero will uh, make the solution undefined uh, let's try this one if y is zero what happens if y is zero so when re we replace y equal to zero this is what happened so when you multiply x minus 2 by 0 the whole thing will become 0 and is that equal to 1 definitely not so if it gives you a contradiction equation then that means that it's not allowed so 0 is not allowed so therefore our range here is that we can use any values of y or we can get any values of y but y is res restricted with 0 the domain for number 11 you always have to look at the denominator you don't care about the numerator the denominator is our concern because our denominator should not be equal to 0 so there therefore x plus 3 is equal to 0 uh, is not equal to 0 so x should not be equal to negative 3 therefore our domain will be we can use any x in a real number but we make sure that we are not going to use negative 3 because negative 3 will make your denominator 0 okay how about for your y so just like earlier you can solve for x in terms of y so how do you do that you change uh, you change f of x x minus 2 all over x minus 3 you change f of x into y so y is equal to x minus 2 over x minus 3 and then solve for x in terms of y x y minus 3 y I distribute the y let's use another marker so that it will be clear so equal to x minus 2 so I just multiply this whole thing to y so since we're looking for x we have to isolate x also 
so that means x y minus x is equal to negative 2 plus 3y so what am I doing here I'm combining the ones with x now uh, the question is how do you get rid of y so remember this two has a common factor which is x so therefore take out x that will become y minus 1 x times y minus 1 negative 2 plus 3y and how do you get rid of y minus 1 you just have to divide by the expression by y minus 1 so you can cancel this two and uh, we should have divided it here so y so as you can see our x now our x now is equal to negative or 3y minus 2 all over y minus 1 are there any restrictions here there is because in your y it should never be equal to 0 also so therefore y should not be equal to 1 because why should that be equal to 1 because 1 will make it 0 I'm sorry for that so let's change this to positive 1 in number 12 we have our domain we're concerned with our denominator x minus 3 should be greater than 0 why should be greater than 0 why are, uh, why are we not not equal to remember we're, we cannot use negative here so that means we can only use positive when you say positive it's greater than 0 okay are we allowed to get 0 yes for the square root but not for the fraction okay so that's why we don't have the equality sign here so x is greater than 3 that's it so the domain is x such that x is greater than 3 because if you will use less than 3 it will give you a negative if you will use exactly 3 it will give you 0 and remember 0 is not allowed in the denominator the range this time you can actually use uh, the idea we had earlier f of x is equal to 5 over square root of x minus 3 so this becomes y equal to 5 over square root of x minus 3 multiply that one that will become square root of x or y times x minus 3 equal to 5 okay since we're isolating both sides so that will be y and square root of x minus 3 is equal to 5 over y so how do you get rid of the uh, or how can you isolate x by squaring both sides if you square both sides that will cancel out the radical so x minus 3 is equal to 25 over y squared so therefore x minus 3 is equal to 25 over y squared or let's uh, transpose this one that will give you positive 3 so this is y squared sorry so 25 over y squared so therefore y here should not be equal to 0 because when y is 0 the denominator is 0 that's it that's the only restriction that you have for that function so therefore our range now will be y such that y is not equal to 0